Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. The way you learn math is by practicing just like juggling. Today I'm going to go over the ASVAB math book. Specifically today I'm going to go over chapter 2, decimals, okay. comparing decimals, rounding decimals, adding and subtracting decimals, and I'm going to split into a second video of multiplying and dividing decimals. This is to prepare you for any standardized math exam, whether it's the ASVAB, a contractor, union, entrance exam. Uh, knowing decimals is key. Before you do decimals, though, go back and watch the video on fractions. I'll put a link to it right here on the screen. Okay, uh, the best way to do math is by practicing. You do need some explanation, so I'd watch the video, pause the video, have a notebook and pencil in front of you, and then do the problems before I do them, unpause the video, and then watch how I do them. The only way to really get this stuff down is by participating and practicing. So, all right, the first section we're gonna do on decimals is comparing decimals, which one's bigger than the other one. So we need a fundamental understanding of what a decimal is uh, and some other parts about it. So to start with, a decimal is just a fractional part of a number. So that's why you need to know your fractions first. So if you're looking at this number right here, 45.3861, the four and the five, 45, that's the whole number. The .3861, that's the fractional. It's not a full number, it's .3861 of a number. So this is a partial part of a number. First thing you need to know is that this four right here is the tens place. This five is the ones place. Then we get to the decimal point. This is the tenths place. So that three is three tenths of one. That eight is a hundredths place. So that eight is eight one hundredths. That six is a thousandths place, six one thousandths. And then that one right there is a ten thousandths place. So we have the tenths place, the hundredths place, the thousandths, and the ten thousandths place. After that we need to know these few bits of notation here. This is an equal sign. That means x is equal to 8. They are the exact same thing. If x equals 8, 8 and x are interchangeable. This is a less than sign. I think sometimes I look at it like an alligator's mouth. It always goes to the smaller number. So if I had x is less than 8, x could be 7, 6, 5, negative 20. It has to be less than. So the smaller number is less than this number. This is greater than. So if I had x is greater than 8, that means x has to be larger than 8, something like 9 or 10. And again, you can see it's pointing to the smaller number, the smaller size at the smaller number. If I draw that on a number line, I use an open circle at 8 to say it is not inclusive of 8, and it's everything greater than 8, so it, I would draw it this way. And a value could be 9, 9 is greater than 8, 10 is greater than 8. I don't include 8 in that series because 8 is not greater than 8. Um, but that takes us to our next two symbols, greater than or equal to. If on the other hand, this was x is greater than or equal to 8, I would bubble in this dot right here and say x could be equal to 8 or anything greater than. So x greater than or equal to 8, 8 will work, 9 will work, 10 will work. And same thing down here, if I have x is less than or equal to 8, it's going to be a bubble on the 8 going that away, and any number like 8 is less than or equal to 8. So 8 would work, negative 5 would work, 0 would work, any of those values there. All right, let's stay with comparing decimals. Let's look at a couple examples here. Compare 0 0.03 and 0 0.30. So there's our decimal place. We've got to figure out what our tenths is. Our tenths here is zero. Our tenths here is three. So before we compare anything, we're going to look at the first number to the right of the decimal place and see which one's greater. Three is greater than zero. If they were the same, then I would go to the next decimal place over. So the way I write this is point three is greater than 
0.03. Here's another one, 0 0.0917 versus 0 0.217. Again, we're just going to go right to the tenths place first and see which number is bigger. If they're the same, then I go to the next number, 0 0.0 or 0 0.2. 0 0.2. 1,7 is greater than 0 0.0917. So that's how you compare decimals. Let's bring up some practice problems. You can okay, pause the video right here, do these problems and unpause it. So looking at number one, is 0.5 greater or 0.6 greater? Well, that's a larger number. We're just in the tenths place, so this is greater than. Right here, 0.9 or 0.8. Again, we're only in the tens place. That one's greater. The arrow, the larger part of it goes to the larger number. The smaller part of it goes to the smaller number. Which one's greater here, 0.1 or 0 0.2? 0 0.2 is greater. I'm looking at the tens place, 0 and 0, they're the same. So then I go to the hundreds place, 2 or 6. 6 is greater than 2. So that one's greater. Again, right here, the tenths place is the same. So I go to the hundreds place. The eighth is greater than five. I'm still sticking right here with the tenths place. I have a one or a zero. One's a larger number. So that one's greater. Now, this is the first one we've had like this where we're on the left side of the decimal place. So I'm looking to see which one's the bigger one. Is 3 larger than 2 or 2 larger than 3? Three? 3 is greater, so the greater sign goes towards the 3. 4.8 or 8.4, I'm not even looking at the decimal, I'm just looking at the integer, the whole number. Is 4 or 8 greater? 8 is greater. All right, this one's kind of tricky because they look kind of similar, but I'm going to just keep doing it systematically. Nothing's to the left, so we're only looking at the decimal portion. First, we look at the tens place. Is zero greater than zero? They're the same. Is zero greater than five? No, it's not. So after the tens place, I go to hundreds place. In the hundreds place, five is greater than zero. So my symbol goes that way. Here I have numbers greater than one, right? The 20 or the two. So the 20 is greater. I'm not even looking at the decimal. Here, the whole numbers are equal. 55 and 55, so they're the same. So then I go to the tens place, 1 and 1, they're the same. Then I go to the zeros place, 0 and 0, they're the same. And then I go to the thousands place, 0, there's no number there, so it has to be a 0, they're the same. So these are two identical numbers, they have the same weight, so they are equal to each other. Right here, no whole number, to go to the right of the decimal, fours are the same, fours are the same. There's no zero here, which means it has to be a zero on the right side of the decimal. So these two numbers are equal. 6.01, 6.01 equal. 0.77, oh, this is a tricky one. Um, I'm actually looking at the whole numbers first. Is zero greater than 77? No, 77 is greater than zero. Then I go to the decimals, but I don't have to because 77 is greater. Okay, rounding decimals. Again, it's really important you know your place values. Again, this is your ones, this is your tens to the left, and then this is your one tenths, your one one hundredths, your one thousandths, your one ten thousandths place. So you got to know where you're rounding to before you even get started. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Round 0.43679 to the thousandth place. So this is my tenths, my hundredths, my thousandths place. So that means I'm only going to have three um, places after the decimal point. So first you want to look at the place value. Um, and then you want to figure out if you're going to round up or round down, right? So I go, here's my thousandths place. That's where I'm going to end. This is my ten thousandths place. Is nine greater than five? Yes, it is. So that means it's greater than five. It takes this number and makes it up. It pushes it up. So my answer is 4.368. Again, if this was 
0.3672, that number would be less than five, and I would round down and then at 0.367. The key again is knowing where you're rounding to and those place values. Okay, round 1.5237 to the nearest hundredths place. Uh, tenths, hundredths, so I'm only going to have two spaces after the decimal point. I look to the right of it, it's a three lower than five, so I'm going to round down and I end with 1.52. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems, get something done. All right, pause the video right here, do the problems before I do them. Uh, unpause the video, then watch how I do them. So we did those comparing decimals, now we're looking at rounding. Round each decimal to the nearest whole number. Right, whole number is we're getting rid of the decimal. We're going to round up if it's greater than 5 and down if it's less than 5. 5.8, 8 is greater than 0.5, so we're going to round up to get 6. 6.4, less than 5, we're going to round down to get 6 as well. 12.3, less than 5. 9.2, let the 2 is less than 5, so I round down, round up, 22.4, got to go down, ooh, pen's not working, 6.8, that point 8 is greater than 5, so I round up to 7, 15.9, large, so I go up to 16, 13.41, there are more places here, but I don't need to look at them yet because that four is less than five, so I round down. That seven is greater than five, I round up. I'm at five right here, so I'm not sure what to do, but the di digit to the right of it's an eight, so that would round that up to a six greater than five, so I would round up to 68. I'm not really looking at, at the hundreds place, I'm only looking at the tens place. That six is greater than five, I round up. That eight is greater than five, so I round up. That three, less than five, I round down. Eight, greater than five. Two, less than five, so I round down to 98. All right, now we're gonna look at adding and subtracting decimals or with decimals. Um, adding and subtracting with decimals is easier than multiplying and dividing with decimals, but remember that was different for fractions. Adding and subtracting fractions is a little trickier because you need a common denominator. The key in adding and subtracting decimals is that the decimal point lines up perfectly. That's really the most important part. And then you could add zeros anywhere you want to the right. So don't forget your place value. Again, this is your tens, your ones your one-tenth, one-hundredths, one-thousandths, one-ten-thousandths. Let's take a look at adding these two together. 1.7 and 4.12, I write that down. 1.7, 4.12. Right here, those decimal points are perfectly vertical lined up. There's no number there, I'm gonna add a zero there. I could add as many zeros as I want to the right. Zero plus two is two, seven and one is eight. My decimal place stays lined up. One and four is five. Okay. 5.58 minus 4.23. My decimal places are perfectly lined up. Now I just subtract. Eight minus three is five. Five minus two is three. Decimal places line up. Five minus four is one. Correct answer, 1.35. All right, let's get something done, do some practice problems. Pause the video, do these problems, and watch how I do them. So I have 12.1, I don't think I'll do all of these, but I'll do some of them, and 36.2, decimal places are perfectly lined up. One and two is three, two and six is eight, three and one is four, decimal place in the exact same spot. You can check these easily with the calculator if you're doing them yourself. Number 33, we're going to do this one next. 45.1 plus 12.8. 1 and 8, 9. 5 and 2, 7. 
four and one five, decimal place comes right down. Number 34, subtraction, 27.9 minus 16.4, decimal place is lined up, 9 minus 4, 5, 7 minus 6, 1, 2 minus 1, 1, decimal place comes straight down. Let's jump down to number 38 here, getting a little more complex. We have 86.16 minus 72.12, decimal places lined up, 6 minus 2 is 4, 1 minus 1 is 0, decimal place, 6 minus 2, 4, 8 minus 7, 1, 14.04 is that one there. Let's jump over here to number 40, 57.33 plus 67. 0.46. 3 and 6, 9. 3 and 4, 7. Decimal place. 7 and 7, 14. I have to carry the 1. 1 and 5 is 6. 6 and 6 is 12. There's no place to carry the 1 to. All right, let's take a look at number 41 here. 46.26. Minus 39.49. Now we're going to have to do some borrowing. I can't do 6 minus 9, so I have to borrow from this 2. A 2 is going to become a 1, and I take 10 out of it and put it over there. 16 minus 9 is 7. 1 minus 4, I can't do that, so I've got to borrow from here. This becomes a 5. I add 10 to that. 11 minus 4 is 7. Decimal place comes straight down. 5 minus 9, I can't do that, so I've got to borrow from this. This becomes a 3. Add 10 to that. 15 minus 9 is 6. 3 minus 3 is 0. I need to write that down. My answer is 6.77. Let me do one more right here, number 44. I'm going to take 19.99. And I'm going to add that to 28.7. No value after that 7, so I'm going to put a 0 there. 9 and 0 is 9. 9 and 7 is 16. i got to carry that 1 up here. 1 and 9 is 10. 10 and 8 is 18. i got to carry that 1 from the 18, the 10 spice. 1 plus 1, 2, plus 2, 4. And then my decimal place lines right up there. See if that even makes sense. It's pretty close to 20 plus 30, something near 50. That's it right there. All right, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I'm going to go multiplication and division next in decimals. I uh, appreciate you watching. Thank you.